in Jesus' name. I'm going to talk about something today that uh, I, I don't know. Everybody just stretch a little bit. I want you to chill out a little bit. Give me a little of this right here. I want you to chill out. I want you to rest and I want you to relax because I do not know if you're going to have ever been in a funnier service than we're finna have right now in Jesus' name. I do not care what is happening around me. It does not have no power over me in Jesus' name. The hope of Christ Jesus is alive in you. The courage of Christ Jesus is alive in you. And we unloose the freedom to live in the hope of Jesus. And that's how we're going to do it today. So we've been talking about all of the things that it takes to be a kingdom builder and walking with Jesus. And last week we talked about farming with Jesus. Was that okay with y'all? We talked about farming with Jesus. We, we talked about how we've got to nourish the little lambs like that, like that little calf in the pasture that Kimberly and Miss Carol and Ricky took care of. Have you nourished a little lamb this week? Have you taken time to say, you know, that's somebody that I need to love. That's somebody that's fragile, that needs some help. Have you taken time this week to do that? Lord God, the Bible is about doing the word, not just hearing the word. And so if we haven't taken time to nourish a little lamb this week, we just heard it. So we're going to do it in Jesus' name. God's got specific assignments for you. And, and, it, and it looks different than you think it does. And it, it's more uncomfortable than you want it to be. Do you think it was a little uncomfortable for those disciples? Getting kicked out of the whole cultural Jewish religion and all the things, ostracized by all the society. Did they quit? Did they find some lambs to feed? We wouldn't be here if generations before us didn't find some lambs to feed and to begin to nourish them in Jesus' name. Now, some of you have some wild heifers in your pasture. Some of you are the wild heifer in the pasture. <laughs> I pray you've been working on all that situation too, in Jesus' name. And some of you hadn't paid no attention to the maintenance of your heart, of your spirit man in a long time. You just let yourself be hard and let yourself be crusty and let yourself be sick. And all of a sudden you got 10 foot tall weeds all over you. That ain't, that ain't what you want, is it? Well, if you want something different, you gotta do something different. All right, are we cool on the sound? Everything good? Everybody hear me pretty good? We're up pretty tight. All right. So that's where we kind of walked through last week. I wanted to bring you up to, up to speed. Now, I want, to, I want to put something right directly into your spirit out of John chapter 17, verse 13 through 21. So if you're making notes today, and I pray that you are, and we have extra yellow pads if you, if you need them. Uh, uh, good, Adam. You got your yellow pad right there. Okay. Get your yellow pads. Thank you. Get your pens out. The name of this message, message is the courage of the kingdom builder. The courage of the kingdom builder. Courage comes when you rise up instead of fall down. Courage comes when you connect yourself to heaven instead of earth. Courage comes when you live by faith instead of the things that you see around you. Courage comes when you're in the middle of a situation. You know, you ever heard that thing about why we're defeated? We're, we're, divided. we're, we're defeated when good men do nothing. We see a conflict, we see a problem, and good men do nothing, and we're defeated. Have you been that guy before? Because it's so much easier. I'll just go take care of my family. I won't intervene in this situation. I'll, I'll, that's not my problem. How many of you have lived that way before, right? But if we stop, step in and start to preach, that ain't the right approach either. We step in and we begin to love, Amanda. And we begin to uh, let that person know that they have value. Because there's a reason that people that are hurting and thinking differently, there's a reason why they're there. And love is what's going to bring them home in Jesus' name. But I want to empower you. God has already empowered you. But if, you, if we receive this thing, and we worked on it some yesterday. How many of you were at Jesus Burger yesterday? There were more people at Jesus Burger yesterday than there are here this morning. Praise God. It's awesome. 
Jesus Burger starting to fill back up over there. We had about 10 empty chairs. Otherwise, that uh, it, they were all filled up. And I'm, I'm proud of you. So if you're not doing anything on Saturday, man, you got to come in there and pack that dude out with us. And everybody was pouring in. And they were listening. And they were laughing. And they were crying because there were some onions involved. <laughs> We tried to record it on Facebook. I don't know if the whole thing's on there uh, or not, but uh, it, God gave me a, a really uh, a straight-up word that will help you if you take a look at that in Jesus' name. So let's look at John 17, 13 through 21. Notice, in honor of El Capitan, I'm taking out my phone today. I'm laying it right here to see what time it is. So I don't preach till 1231 like I did the other day. John 17, 13 through 21. No, I did not set a timer. That's what you come in. That's where you come in, George, right there, Samantha. <laughs> Beginning in verse 13. But now I am coming to you. Now, we have started, Fez, we have started the Kingdom Builder series with this scripture. This is Jesus' prayer over his disciples. And, and, and as we started this, I, I pray that it becomes imparted in you in such a way that there's a new confidence in you, that your spirit is receiving something fresh and anew, that when you look at yourself, you look at Jesus too. When you think of yourself, you think of Jesus too. When you hear yourself speak, you hear Jesus, Cindy Brown. He wants to be so intrinsically imparted into us that there is no differentiation. Pablo, let me read this scripture so that we can figure this out. Jesus is on his way to the cross. He is in the last times and the last moments of speaking to them before they go to the garden of Gethsemane. But now I'm coming to you and I say these things while I'm still here in the world that they may experience my joy. Now he's praying to his father right now. This is the most beautiful prayer. Known to man, I believe, right here. This whole chapter is a prayer between Almighty God and His Son, Jesus. So that the world may experience my joy. Somebody say joy. Made full and complete and perfect within them. I'll tell you what. When you raise up a disciple, when you have somebody that gets it, I'm telling you, there's nothing in the world more exciting than seeing a guy that gets it. And all of a sudden, he knows who he is in Christ Jesus, and he's new, and he's changed, and you, you see him changing his lifestyle. I want you to know there is nothing like it, and you can be part of building those kind of disciples, raising up those kind of sons and daughters and grandkiddos in Jesus' name, if you want to, or we can just keep on doing kind of what we're doing and going to church. But I don't think that's what you want. You're an outreaching body, a loving body, and you're engaging people. And you're willing to take the risks to do it because Jesus was risking with these 12. And he's risking with all of us today in Jesus' name. The joy was made complete and, 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 and their hearts were delighted and their hearts were full. And so was Jesus' heart. He was on the way to the cross, but he had to be smiling at the same time, Anthony. Because he had to be saying, man, these guys started out this way and they came to be this way. Fez gave me a revelation the other day talking about the Jesus Journey women and their graduation the other day. Hallelujah. We're so proud of you guys. What a launching pad you got. And he said in the fire department, what we do is we go in and we stop the, the bleeding. We, we, we contain the situation. And then we see what God does with the remainder. We salvage the remainder. He said it a lot better than this. We salvage the remainder. And, and, and then there's a rebuilding and a refurbishing and a, and a reigniting that is happening in these women. And in the fire department, they did it the same way. The Lord put out the fire of the devil and he started the fire of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And that's how you guys are living. In Jesus' name. I think I better get to this second verse here. Or it'll be 1230 before we know it. I have given to them your word, Jesus said. The message that you gave me. And the world hated them. Because they're not of the world. They don't belong to the world. Just as I'm not of the world. And I don't belong to the world. I want you to look at your friend in the pew beside you. And I want to say, hey, you. You're an alien. <laughs> I tricked you, didn't I? Mike Jones just called Peggy an alien. She is not going to cook for him for the next week. He's going to starve. Let's get a little clarification. You don't belong here, y'all. This ain't your home. I'm just a passing through. However that song goes, Bear. Bear and Pablo and a, and a drummer with a, 
with an orange drum kit, did an awesome job leading the praise. And Dakota get us set up, and Anthony and Morgan, congratulations on the birthday party. And Kelsey, happy birthday in Jesus' name. God's pulling us all together here. Verse 2, I have given them your word and the message that you gave me, and the world has hated them. Would that be okay if the world hates you? Hate me, world! I know he's a serial killer, but he hates me. <laughs> hate me. I want to be more like Jesus. He won't hate you if you're lukewarm, by the way. If you're passive and you don't have an opinion and you, 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 you're not iron sharpening iron and you're not salt, they won't hate you. They'll just, you'll be a chameleon. I've been that dude. I've been that lizard. I don't want to be no lizard no more. How about that? I want to rise up on two feet. I've given them your word and the message you gave me and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. And they don't belong to the world just as I'm not of the world and don't belong to the world. Jesus is marrying his disciples. He's saying we are the same. I'm not of the world. They're not of the world. The world hates them. The world hates me. You understand that? He's marrying us right now. There's an integration spiritually and in the flesh that comes to us right now. There's a reappropriation of our personality and our identity in Jesus' name. Do you want it? It won't happen because you come sit in the blue pew. It'll happen because you receive it in your spirit and you're moved forward. It won't happen even if you're motivated emotionally because of something you hear today. It'll happen because the Holy Ghost takes you over and you want something different. And you know that if he's alive in you, Ruth Ann, you can do it in Jesus' name because that's who you are. Verse 15, I don't ask you to take them out of the world. I'm leaving you in the world, treasure, but that you keep them and protect them from the evil, from the evil one, from the devil. They're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Set them apart for your purposes and make them holy. Your word is truth. Jesus says this a couple of times. Sanctified means to be made like Christ. To be made holy. Are there some places in you that still need to be made holy? I have no rock in my hand to chunk at you. But if we want to follow as a kingdom builder and have empowerment in us, we must leave all the, the selfishness that we have that would make us unholy, trying to just get some kind of an emotional need met or, or some kind of a worldly connection. If we're not of the world, if we're an alien, then, then we've got to say, you know what, Lord, sanctify me. I'm going to pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we can talk about how to build your kingdom all day long, but until we Re establish ourselves as sons of the living God, as aliens of this world, as desiring to be not holier than thou in some kind of a religious platform, but so real that you live inside of us. Oh, Lord God, integrate us in that manner in Jesus' name so that we become sanctified, so that we're intentionally sanctifying ourselves. And, Lord, it, it doesn't just happen because we read the Bible every day. It happens because we become the Bible every day because the Word of God, who is Jesus himself, is alive in that Word, is alive in us. So that the Spirit that wrote that Word, Walter, Bam! Wants to take you over in every breath. Yes, the workplace is a mission field. Every breath is a mission field. You're a mission field unto yourself to you sanctified individual in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for baptizing us and bathing us in your blood right now. Let us never see anything in the world except for through the cross of Christ Jesus. Under the blood mantle that he, that he performed on that cross in Jesus' name. Let's go to the next verse. My sanctified friends, just as you commissioned me, Jesus goes on to say, Jesus, com God commissioned, Almighty God, Abba Father from heaven, commissioned Jesus. He sent him into the world. I also... I'm sending you into the world. Now, if I'm a servant shepherd today and God is calling us to build the kingdom of God together, there's a commissioning service that's happening in you. It's happening in your heart, but it must also happen in your legs, in your mouthpiece, in your eyes. A commissioning to be a kingdom builder. A commissioning to live beyond this world. In Jesus' name, I don't pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all of those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message. Check that out. That's where we come in, right? Do you see? Daddy, Jesus, Jesus, apostles, apostles, the world, us. 
All one. Let me finish this thing. I do not pray for these alone, but also for the sake of the treasures and the Jesus Burger friends and the people in White Oak and Gladewater and Gilmer and even in Hallsville that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message that they all may be one. They all may be what? They all may be what? If you know that you are one with Jesus Christ, do you feel weak? No. Now let's go live it that way, Ryan, in Jesus' name. Let's go live in the oneness of Almighty God, planting in you his own spirit in Jesus' name, that they may be one just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. They also will be one in us so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. Lord God, I thank you for this concept, this kingdom building concept of oneness with Jesus, with Almighty God. That he is on us and that's how we're going to live in Jesus' name. Kingdom builders live life building the kingdom in all they do, all they breathe, all they feel. It's organic. It's who you are. I am a kingdom builder. I don't have to say, I go to church. Sorry, man, you're not a kingdom builder. If that's your opinion and that's how you do it, that's, you're not a kingdom builder. I go to church so that I can be empowered in the Holy Spirit. But I am also empowered in the Holy Spirit daily by connection with Almighty God, by connection with other people and other friends. I don't get all of my uh, empowerment in, in, in any way from the preacher, whether it be Brother Allen or whoever it may be. I get it from directly from the Lord Jesus. He may use a mouthpiece like a preacher to bring it. But it is the power of God that we want and that we seek in Jesus' name. It's the intimacy with Almighty God that we need. Sons and daughters build the kingdom of God. You feel one with your sons and daughters when they're born, don't you? You know, I mean, the mama was just certainly one with the, with the son or daughter, right? Okay. This is how it is with God and us, this kind of intimacy. And then when the baby comes into the world and you hold the baby and the mama puts the baby on, the skin, on, on her skin and the daddy puts the baby on their skin, they feel one, don't they? Then what happens? The world happens, doesn't it? Kindergarten happens. Bad friends happen. All of a sudden, we're not one. You understand what I'm saying? Lord, in Jesus' name, we're coming back to one right now. God wants you to know right now, some of you are beating yourself up. I see it. He wants you to know that he, he's ready to forgive you right now. He's asking you to repent, which means to turn and to change, to open up the crusty parts of your heart and let him infiltrate everything that you are in Jesus' name. And as you do, he's waiting with a big old giant hug waiting for you. He's at the end of the driveway saying, come on home. It's okay. Come on home with your whole heart. Trust me with your whole heart in Jesus' name. We're one again. Just like you. We, we were in, in glory before we were birthed here. We, were one, we are one with him. We're going to return to be one with him. But we can be one with him right now in Jesus' name. Kingdom building is a lifestyle. Write that down. And I want you to write a question under this. I want you to ask the question, is my lifestyle kingdom building? A lot of our lifestyle is just chasing after comfort in this world. Because the American system has taught us that we have to get a job and be successful and then we'll be happy, hasn't it? And the busier the, we are, the more successful we must be. Now, is the busy guy necessarily building the kingdom of God? The busy guy can be the guy that builds the kingdom of God. If he will take all of his life and say, I'm building the kingdom of God as I do whatever this I'm doing might be. As I connect with whatever this life, life that I'm living, job, uh, calling, friendships, everything, connections. I'm building the kingdom of God. And you begin to see yourself like that. You know what? We're the main tool we got. We talked about it last week or two weeks ago. It's love. That's the main tool of the kingdom builder is build the kingdom with love. In Jesus name. It's not with uh, uh, some kind of doctrine, some kind of theology. And love's an action 
Fanny and Rebecca will tell you that as, as they have fallen in love with Jesus and fallen in love with each other. And falling in love with other people that they're loving around them every day in Jesus' name. And you know what's something beautiful about Rebecca? And, and many of y'all. She doesn't expect somebody to just all of a sudden change. She's just going to keep on loving them. And she's going to let God do, her, do, do, do his thing in Jesus' name. Takes all the pressure off of us, doesn't it? Farmer puts, well, I, that's, I, that's, I got this scripture in a second. No matter what we're doing, if we're breathing, we're on Jesus' mission. No matter what mood we're in or who we're around, we're building Jesus' kingdom. Rick Warren said it in The Purpose Driven Life, and I told you this the other day, but I really want to uh, help us understand. The kingdom builder understands the first line in this book that says, it's not about me. You can write that down. The kingdom builder grabs a hold of that right now. That's how you do it, Elaine. It's not about me. We confirm our identity as sons and daughters through the joy that erupts like a volcano in the spirit and changes everything. You see, when we live with this ongoing joy, then the whole world around us is going to change. And we're going to have a lot of joy today, by the way. It's point number one, kingdom building takes courage. Kingdom building takes courage. We overcome fear by trusting Jesus with all of our life. Today, I'm going to ask you to have a courage to change. No matter how uh, good you think you're doing or, or how much you're following the Lord Jesus. And I'm challenging myself too, Glenna. I'm saying, Brother Johnson, Brother Allen, you got to have courage to change too. If you're asking these guys to change, you got to change too. I want to. I want to be evolving. I want to be falling in love with Jesus more and more all the time. I want to know how I can love more purely as he does. So I'm challenging myself too. We have to take emotional risks as kingdom builders. We've got to put ourselves out there. You see, a lot of people say when somebody comes and they try to tell you about Jesus and you get rejected and they'll tell you that, that uh, they're rejecting Jesus, they're not rejecting you. But I want to take that a little step farther because you see, if Jesus is in you and you're one with Jesus, we both experience rejection because we're invested in that now do we live with rejection as orphans no we live in greater intimacy let me let me go this one more farther a little farther for those of you that want to go we live ricky in greater intimacy with almighty god boys because we understand the rejection that he receives every moment of every day when people say no to his son now we see that now, do we carry that? No, we carry it to the cross. If you're going to be a kingdom builder, you got to be, you need to write this down. You got to be constantly emptying out all of the cares of this world, Cindy Brown, at the cross, moment by moment. Okay? I know a little bit, a little something about how things can get heavy on you. We ain't going to let them get heavy. We're going to take them to the cross. Cast all my cares on you. Romans 6, cast all my cares on you for he cares for you. So we are going to carry him right there to the cross. Some of us have had such a religious experience that we, it's not natural for us just to release and release and release. We, we, we process things and through religious channels or, or through such painful places. But I just want to give you permission to release yourself right now in Jesus' name. God said, cast the cares on him. We'll never be free. We'll never be like those helium balloons that were floating around yesterday if we carry a big old bunch of boulders around with us, right? So let's give them to them in Jesus' name. The courage to change. The opportunity to store up treasures in heaven. I want to put this out before you too. Every apostle changed. Every apostle that we read about in the scripture. Every one of them changed. Many of the Old Testament characters, we saw a great change in those guys, right? They started out one way, they came through a different way. So just give yourself a chance to change. If you feel like you're so set in your ways and you're so stuck, I'm talking to you right now. Hallelujah. Challenge yourself. Get out of your comfort zone and move forward. Now, I really want to devote this whole message to my father-in-law, El Capitan, Herbie Penn. I met him because in 1970, our family 
moved to Longview and my dad became the pastor of Moberly. And we moved into Pine Tree on Buccaneer. And right across the street from Buccaneer, where we moved, was an awesome basketball player named Jeff Penn. And I, I, he was a couple of years older than me, a great athlete, baseball player, fantastic, fast. And I really respected this guy. And we got to be friends and, and uh, we competed and all of those kind of things. And he had a dad that was real mean. And his name was El Capitan. And uh, I, I didn't like going over there a lot of times because it was, you know, you know, he just, I don't know, it just kind of intimidated me somehow or the other. But he, uh, he really had special calling on his life, even at that point in his life. But it took him many years to come to Jesus. For those of y'all that don't know the love story between Cindy and I, um, she's a year older than me and we were friends in high school. No, she's not. She's way younger than me. Excuse me. I misspoke. Like 20 years younger than me. And, uh, and we, 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 we were friends in high school, and, but not real close or anything. And her dad wouldn't even let her come out in the front yard because there were too many boys in the neighborhood. So he kept her sequestered in the house all the time. So we didn't even get to be friends with her in the neighborhood, right? I just kept it in. He's trying to get to me. So anyway, we... Uh, we, we parted our ways in high school, and I went to Dallas and, and to Baylor and everything, and, and then I got arrested, and I went to prison. And I got out of prison, and, and miraculously, by the grace of God, I met Cindy again in Dallas. Didn't even know who she was for a little while, and I found out who she was. And then her, da her, little bro her brother, Jeff, had just died. He had just passed away of a heart failure at that time. That's when I came into her life, right at that time. And you know what, boys, girls? I never left. Eventually, I asked old El Capitan, El Capitan, I'd, I'd sure would like to marry your daughter. She's awful pretty. And he said, let me think about it. He's never given me a straight answer on the whole deal. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know if he's going to let me do it or not. I went ahead and went forward with that thing. But that's the story of El Capitan. But about seven years ago, I really started to see him really changing. He had stopped smoking and drinking because he had a, a, a physical scare. But then he started to hear from the Lord. And I had the pleasure of just holding his hand and praying with him as he laid his life down and asked Jesus to be the king of his life. And that it wasn't enough. At that point, when we were praying at the age of about 72, he... Uh, he, he, he remembered a promise, Walter, that he made to his dad. He said, you know, I told my dad that I was going to, that I was going to read the whole Bible and I'm going to do it. So I got him a Bible and he has read that whole Bible since then in Jesus name. How about that? Not only has he read it, he's learned to live that Bible. So just in case you're a person that says, I can't change. I don't need to change. There's nothing in me. Let me just put El Capitan out there as a guy that has the hope of Jesus in him that was able to do it. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a little film here. You got that short video? Yeah, I want to show that short video right now. Let me introduce this guy before he rolls this thing. Mr. Penn used to be isolated and uh, didn't like church people to come around and talk to him and try and bother him. And, and in some ways, uh, he and Ms. Penn were just kind of homebodies and, and didn't get out and get around very much. But I want you to know that the world opened up for El Capitan. Those of you that know him, you know that you've got the funniest friend in the world, the most joyful guy in the world in Jesus' name. Well, there's a rock climber, an alpinist named Alex Humboldt. He's about 36 years old, and what he does is he climbs up mountains. He's a super mountain climber, right? And you know, when you mountain climb, you get those pegs and you nail them into the, into the walls of the mountains, and then you have these ropes, and then you're climbing. You're not holding the ropes. You're, you're climbing along, but then if you happen to fall, the rope catches you. Well, Alex Hummold sees things a little differently. This guy mountain climbs without any ropes. Let's watch this video.
give me a chance to turn on the air conditioner up here. No problem. Did we find it, Lane? Oh, there we go. Did we get it, bro? Here we go. Alex Hummold was challenged this way. This is what he said. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, these are pictures. Okay, there you go. All right, go, roll those pictures, Lane. Do you see any ropes on that guy? How about that? How do you feel when you see that? <laughs> I, I want to sit down myself. I want to get planted in here. Alex Hummelt. No ropes. Is that, that's out there, ain't it? Now, we're all going mountain climbing after the service. <laughs> okay, Lane, if you get that video, pop that thing back up. But let me, let me tell you about this. So, so Alex Hummelt said this. He says, I fear. I'm glad that I fear. But I have to have courage to overcome fear. Remember the, the name of this message is it takes courage to be a kingdom builder, right? But here's what he said. He says, what I find helps me, Donna, to overcome fear and to have courage is to gradually expand my boundaries, expand my limits step by step until the impossible becomes possible to gradually expand my limits. Now, I want to talk to you very seriously right now. Where, what limits do you, you've got in your head uh, that, that need to be gradually expanded? What steps do you need to literally take to become the kingdom builder that God's calling you to be? What testimony do you need to have? I'm, I'm going to give you a step right now. Some of you need to cut off some of the relationships with the sorry worldly friends that are in your life. What, what, are, what are you feeding your spirit with? What are you feeding your soul with? Are you one with Jesus when you're, when you're letting those people and their mouths and their bad attitudes get into you? Absolutely not. Could that be one of the steps that we use to gradually expand our boundaries right now? In Jesus' name. Let's think about that. Alex Hummold scaled up a mountain in Yellowstone. Anybody been to Yellowstone? Donna, you been to Yellowstone? I Something wrong with your arm? I've been to Yellowstone. There you go. Okay. All right. Why you been to Yellowstone over there? Have you ever been and seen the mountain called El Capitan? Yosemite. I'm sorry, not Yellowstone. Excuse me. Yosemite. There is literally a mountain there called El Capitan. Now, I call El Capitan El Capitan because he's the boss. This mountain is the boss. Great, phenomenal, world-class mountain climbers. Only a few can climb up the thing with ropes, Bear. Alex Hummelt, no ropes. 2,960 feet straight up, no ropes. Three hours and 56 minutes on the mountain, hanging on to that dude, no ropes. I'm trying to help you expand your boundaries right now in Jesus' name. I'm trying to break the paralyzation off of you right now. I'm trying to give you some guts and some glory that God wants to put in you right now in Jesus' name. I'll tell you a story about how God used Del Capitan this week. Early in the week, I had gone to the feed store over in Overton. And uh, it's a kind man named Jim that runs that feed store over there. Some of you probably know him over there. And... Uh, he had gotten sick about a year and a half, two years ago, real sick, got COVID, got problems with various things. He's in the hospital for 
like eight months on his deathbed on a ventilator for the think two months I mean he was dire sick super sick and he had only been back to work a little bit and I, I didn't get to see him very much and I was, I was in the feed store and he was he, he's in there Alston and he came and he, he sat down beside me and uh, he said how's your father-in-law because Mr. Penn, for like 20 years, lived over there in Overton and worked on the farm over there where Cindy and I live. He didn't live out there, but he worked on that farm every day. And so they got to be fast friends. And in the process of that, uh, they knew each other. And they kind of knew each other in a rough, worldly kind of way. You understand what I'm saying? There wasn't no Jesus talk going on between them. But when he sat down beside me, I began to ask, he, he started asking me, how's my father-in-law? And I started telling him how sick he was, how he wasn't doing good. By the way, he's in the hospital this morning. Y'all probably prayed for him. Some different things are happening in him. You know what's happening in him? Let me tell you. Hope is happening in him. Let me tell you what's happening in him. Eternity is happening in him right now in Jesus' name. So I sat down beside Jim and I began to address him. And, and, and he said, how's, how's Mr. Penn? How's Herbie? And I began to tell him how sick he was and all those kind of things. But I said, Jim, I need to tell you the most important thing about how awesome he is you see about seven years ago you remember how rough mr Penn was old jim goes pretty rough <laughs> you remember how rough he was well he ain't rough no more god took a hold of his heart and he's soft now he got a hold of his heart and he prayed and he asked jesus to be the king of his life and god changed everything He's, he's part of our treasure congregation, part of our family. And then I said this, and then all of his family, his daughters and his granddaughters and everybody else has come to Jesus as a result of El Capitan coming to Jesus. Because he changed, he started to change the generations. And Jim kind of sits back and he goes, is that so? And I said, yes, it's a miracle, isn't it? And he didn't respond so much. And I said, Jim, I understand that when you were in the hospital, And while we were all praying for you, that God started speaking to you. And he said, yeah, a lot of people were praying for me. And I said, did you ever get close to God in those times? And he said, yeah, me and God spent a lot of time talking. And then I asked him this. I said, Jim, have you ever come to the place in your life where you decided to ask God to be the king of your life? Where you said, I'm a sinner and I need you and I don't want to live this life anymore. And I want to die to myself and I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart and into my life and to change me forever. And I want to know for sure that I'm a child of the king and a son of the living God and that there's a place in heaven for me. I ask him that question really straight up and he goes, no, can't say that I have. Jim, Mr. Penn, he got to that place. Where he asked God to be the king of his life. And then he, he changed and he let God change him. Would you like to ask God to be the king of your life right now? Would you like you and I to pray? And he said, yeah, yeah, I would. I held his hand and he asked Jesus to be the king of his life. And it was all because of El Capitan's influence. It was all because of the connection between the decision that El Capitan made to change his life and to come into his life that made that happen in Jesus' name. Now, what about your influence? How are you living your influence? How are you using your influence in Jesus' name? I'm going to read this parable real quick. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. This is called the kingdom parable. Mark 4, 26. Mark 4, verse 26 through 29. This is called the kingdom parable. Then he said, the kingdom of God is like a man who throws seed on the ground. First of all, if the kingdom of God is like a man who throws seed on the ground, is that like you? Are you throwing seed on the ground? Write that on your notes. I cannot be part of the kingdom of God if I'm not throwing seed on the ground. Now, notice it did not say he threw it, he threw the seed on a rooftop. It did not say he threw the seed in the produce aisle of Brookshire's. He said he threw it on the ground. It's a very important principle right here. I meant to make you some copies and send out a little homework for you. But he had to make sure that seed connected with the ground. The ground. 
He had to find an empty place where that seed could land. You need to write that down. That's the first part of the kingdom principle right here, of the kingdom parable principle. You've got to find an empty place for the seed to land. In Jesus' name, right now, you guys are thinking about empty places like, like Jim, over Jim's feet. Other people in your life that need to be influenced to the, by, the, by the Lord Jesus Christ. Then there's an emptiness in them. Verse 26, I'm going to finish this verse. He said, the kingdom of God is like a man who throws seed on the ground. Verse 27, he goes to bed at night. He gets up every day. And in the meantime, the seed sprouts and grows. How he does this, he does not know. Isn't that awesome? It's God that brings the increase. It's God that uh, takes that seed and, and makes it begin to regenerate. So in Jesus' name, that gives us a, the opportunity to rest. We can't make anything. I can't make anything grow. But God can. When that seed is in the ground and things start to change in our lives, God makes it grow. And to the glory of God, I, I pray it's growing in every one of you right now. In Jesus' name. The earth produces crops by itself. First the blade of head of the grain, the mature grain in the head. But when the crop ripens, he immediately takes a sickle to it. Because the time of the harvest has come. So here it is. Here's what happens. This is the cycle of the kingdom. The cycle of the farmer. The seed gets in the ground. If the seed never gets in the ground, forget it. Nothing else is going to happen. All of Christianity is going to die if we don't put the seed in the ground. But when it cuts in the ground, miraculously, overnight, somehow or the other, it starts to sprout. It starts to come up. The little shoots become uh, stronger and stronger. And then it starts to put fruit out. It starts to have corn and wheat and different things. And then here comes the sickle. And when the sickle comes, it kills the plant. The seed falls in the ground. And guess what? It regenerates. That seed had to die. That plant had to die for that regeneration. You're part of this cycle if you'll get a hold of it in Jesus' name. So the second point is the kingdom builder. And the last point right here is we need to put seeds of joy in the ground. You ever like say some, some old fogey mad at the world person ever come up to you and try to tell you about Jesus? Tell you a whole bunch of scripture that they're not living? Okay. Trying to turn you off, didn't it? But when you have a guy or a woman or a lady who has a new life fired up by Jesus and the joy is just falling out of them, why wouldn't you want some of that? I'm going to come get some of that. What kind of party are you going to go to? Now, I'm going to go to the party where there's some rock and roll. Rock and roll with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But that's, I cannot produce, a preacher can't produce joy inside of you, but Jesus can right now. Amen. But I need to tell you this, some of you are looking backwards, and that's why there's no joy in you. Uh, and you're the one that's got to be tired of it. You're tired of looking backwards? You're tired of letting the whole world and every, every plan of the devil have any power over you? That's got to be broken off right now so that the joy seed bursts forth. Capitan could have spent a lot of time regretting how he lived or wish he'd come to Jesus sooner or things like that, right? But by the grace of God, he began to look forward and all of the joy that was in him. Lane, I'm going to ask you to get these pictures going now. All the joy that was naturally in him began to come out of him and he became just, just the funniest most. He's always been funny, but he became this joyously funny guy. Are y'all ready to do some laughing right now? I pray that y'all are ready to do some laughing right now because he became this very hilarious, practical joker. And when he did that, uh, we, we all just kind of jumped on board. As a matter of fact, uh, he, he, at Christmas, he'll give you these little, he don't go to the store when he has Christmas. He goes out to his shop or somewhere or the other where he's been collecting some various items, like from the hospital, like a bedpan. You might get a bedpan for Christmas, Okay. From Tom Landry. Tom Landry might have sent you a bedpan for Christmas, okay? Or, or a pair of socks from the hospital. I don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get something or the other. But, but he, he, he has that kind of joy and that kind of creativity inside of him. One day on my birthday, he gave me a walker with a rearview mirror on it. <laughs> Had a little bell, a little horn, people to come by, okay? Had a little roll of toilet paper in case I couldn't make it. <laughs> That's kind of that's the kind of guy uh, that uh, that Capitan is, and so 
uh, during the process of this last year, you know, physically it's been a tough year, but I'll tell you what, he's grown closer and closer to the Lord, amen, through the whole process. A while back, he was in the hospital with a UTI, and they gave him some Leviquin. Turns out he was allergic to Leviquin, and he broke out in these huge blisters all over him. Lane, do you have some of those pictures? He broke out in these big blisters over him, and he contracted a disease called Stevens Johnson. And so then we were in the rehab at Medical City. Just keep on rolling there. We're in the rehab at Medical City there, Lane. And, uh, and we, he started to get better. And he started to, uh, we were there for a whole month altogether. And as he got better, he was, he, was, he was learning to walk. He had to learn to walk again because he hadn't walked in a long time. And he's a Celtic fan. There he is right there, okay? And he's getting better and he's getting stronger. And of course, Sonny came to see him and that helped him out right there. And then he, he, he gets a little bit better right there. And I had a dog come see him. How about that? That'll, that'll make you feel better. And there's his daughter, the greatest princess nurse in the world right there. That's the biggest smile he's got right there. Maybe one more. Okay, back that up, Lane. Take that off. Okay. All right, so now we are getting toward the end, and he's about to let him out of, he's about to let him out of, they're about, he's about to be able to get out of, of the hospital right there. We've been there for a long time. Okay, so I'm at home uh, uh, right before that, get, gathering up stuff, and I, I have to shuttle back and forth, and lo and behold, I find something in his room. He's a prankster, right? I find something in his room that, that looks a little unusual, but I just decide, you know what, Michael, he might need this. So I just throw it in, the, in my bag and I take it to the hospital. And so I've got this particular item in, in the bag with me and, and, uh, and I take it up there to the hospital and, and I, I don't know if we're going to use this thing or not. I don't know if it's going to come in handy or not, Bear, but I, I've got it with me just in case I, I might need it. And so... Uh, I got up to the hospital that night, and, uh, and, and I got in at night, and I said, well, what kind of a nurse we got? Who we got as a nurse? And he, started, he goes like this. Because some of them kind of maybe have had a bad day for the last 15 years. <laughs> and, and so they ain't as, quite as joyful. And so he's going like this right here, okay? And so I, 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 I approach him about this idea I got. And uh, go ahead, Lane, and, and show this first picture here. Now, if you, this is Grace. She's from Africa. She's so sweet. And she's examining a foot there, Capitan's foot. And do you notice anything unusual about the, the feet right there across there? there? There are three feet. Now, why would a person have three feet in the hospital? Well, it might be, it might be, it might be that this was one of the feet in the hospital. And so I came to, the, I came in there and I'm, we're on our way out of the hospital. We're leaving the hospital and we knew all these people uh, in the hospital and I said, Grace, could you come down here and, and look at Capitan's feet? There seems to be some discoloration. And so they come, they come around and one by one, roll that next picture. One by one, they look at these feet and they examine these feet and they, they can't figure out what's wrong with this feet. And, and all of these different people, they, they coming in there. To, now look at Capitan's face right there. Look at his face right there. <laughs> See the other nurses? They're in on it too. By now, they're all in on it. And so, nurse, go roll that next one. There's old Ivan. Ivan was one of our rehab counselors, and he came in there. And, and we said, we got to get them. He's like a really cocky a Russian guy and everything. He knows everything. I said, we got to go get Ivan. He'll know what to do with the discoloration in this foot. And so we bring that Al Ivan in there, and he starts looking just like everybody else. Roll that next picture. 
All right, there it is. There's the a, a whole team. And we get to go home a little while later in Jesus' name. But I want you to know that the joy of what happened in that incident. You may think that's a little silly. That's all right. Me and Mr. Penn are kind of silly like that. But that night, this happened the final day. But the night before that happened. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the night before that happened. Uh, when we had this nurse named Aditha and she was, she was having a bad day and she, she was, and I didn't know all that. I thought this foot thing would make her laugh, but instead of making her laugh, she got all paranoid and all worked up over it. Right. And, uh, and, and, and so in a little while after, after I had prayed about it and everything, I, I went down to talk to, to her name was Aditha and at the nurse's station and I, and, I, and the Lord started talking to me. And I said, Aditha, I'm so sorry if that upset you in any way. We're just trying to smile. You guys have been so good to us on our way home. And uh, Aditha, I can tell something that is happening in your life. And God started speaking to me. And, and he said, you're taking care of your whole family. You're sending money back to the Philippines. And there's so much pressure on you. Your husband isn't even working right now. God was telling me all of these kind of things. And I mean, she just starts crying. She just starts weeping and she just starts hugging me like she hadn't hugged anybody in 10 years. So God used this joyous situation to bring about a revival in her heart. Her whole countenance, her whole heart, we prayed. I spent time listening to her. It's like nobody was listening to her. She began to tell me all of these things and the pain that she'd been going through. And she, she just unloaded it all. And I just let her know that God saw her. That God saw her and that God loved her and God wanted her to have a lot of joy. And then she came back in and she got a hold of that foot and she started beating El Capitan with that foot. I can't believe he did that to me. And we had the greatest time in the world in Jesus' name. You see, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we got to have joy. And when we have joy in the Lord Jesus, you don't know what kind of miracles will spring forth from that kind of joy in Jesus' name. I want you to show this last picture, the last picture that I sent you. Lane, if you will, I'd like the prayer team to take their place. Bear, come get your guitar. Okay, so El Capitan's sick right now. He's got a bad urinary tract infection. It's starting to clear up. This is his doctor, Dr. Ike, and his nurse, Julie. And we were praying for him this morning, of course. And he's going to come back home. And whatever happens with him, that's what God wants. We're putting him in God's hands. We're going to do our best to take care of him in Jesus' name unto the Lord Jesus. And God knows exactly what he needs. Yesterday, I was reading the Bible to him. He finished the whole Bible. Then he went back and read some of the New Testament, maybe the whole thing. And then he read the book of Romans again. And then he started talking to me about the book of Psalms. He said, I like the book of Psalms, Alan. Brings me comfort. Gives me peace. And he had been so lethargic, Brother Ricky, uh, for this whole time that we had been together in the hospital this time. Um, he'd been just had no energy and, uh, you know, was really sick. But when I, I read this scripture to him, Gary Don sent it to me and praise God, God's hand is on Gary Don physically in Jesus name. He's coming through this thing by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name under the blood of Jesus with the great faith of our father and the faith of multitudes that are praying for him and believing in Jesus name. And we're certainly believing for El Capitan too in Jesus name. Let's all stand together. I want to read this psalm over you because you need some comfort right now. You need some joy, but mostly you need some courage. If you want to be a kingdom builder, it's time to man up and be courageous. It's time to go talk to Jim at the feed store. It's time to talk to Aditha from the Philippines. It's time to make a joke out of something and not take the world so seriously. It's time to look forward instead of backwards in Jesus' name. It's time to let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And I'm just going to pray this over you as you come and pray. we got prayer warriors all over the place. In Jesus' name, y'all spread yourselves out. Thank you, Lord. Elaine Armack, would y'all come pray with us in Jesus' name?
Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Austin. I pray that you had a joyous service today. And if you ever get in the hospital, I'll bring that foot with me. And we'll see what the nurse has to say about that thing. Psalm 27. The Lord, somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Is my light my and my salvation. my salvation. The Lord is the refuge and fortress in my life. Whom shall I dread? Whom shall I fear? When wickedness comes against me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they will stumble and they will fall. I want to pronounce that over you right now in Jesus' name, that your enemies will not prevail over you right now. That the power of Almighty God has already gone before you. If you want to walk in oneness with Almighty God, then the victory has already been won in Jesus' name. Though an army encamp around me, my heart will not fear. The war will rise against me. Even in this, I am confident one thing I've asked of the Lord. That I will seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Lord God, let your house dwell in us. And let our house dwell in you. And let eternity begin today in Jesus' name. And to gaze upon the beauty and the delightful lovingness. And the majestic grandeur of the Lord. And to meditate in his temple. I want you to know that if you are his temple. And you are meditating upon him. Then you are one with the Lord. Sanctification is happening in you. But when we let the extremities of the world. And the trouble. And the enemies try and take hold of us. Then it breaks the sonship. For those moments. Lord God I pray for the oneness to come back. Right now in this moment. For in the day of trouble. He will hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent. He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. In his tent, I will offer sacrifices with joy and shouts, and I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious and compassionate to me, and answer me. And when you said, I will seek my face in prayer, require my presence as your greatest need, my heart said to you, your face, O oh Lord. Your face, O oh Lord. Say that with me. Your face, O oh Lord. Will I seek? I will seek your face, Lord God. Don't hide your face from me. Don't turn for your servant away in anger. And you have always been my help. Do not abandon me or leave me, O oh God of my salvation, although my father and my mother have abandoned me. Now, this is a very real thing that David is saying right here. That really happened in his life. It's really happened in some of your lives. So what? said David yet the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his child teach me your way O Lord and lead me on a level path because my enemies who lie in wait do not give up the will of my adversaries for the false witnesses have come against me they breathe out violence I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living wait for and confidently expect the Lord be strong and don't let your and let your heart take courage Lord God right now this is what we've been praying about that our heart would take courage Lord God raise your hand if you want the courage you need courage to break out of some place that you're in Lord God, right now, we pray for an anointing of courage upon all of us right now. We've raised our hands to say there are places where I'm fearful, that I'm scared, that I still let sin in, that I compromise, that I, that I, that I don't speak when I should speak. Lord God, you want us to change generations, but it will not happen if we're just watching Fox News and complaining. It'll happen when we begin to sh take a risk. And we're going to take a risk gradually expanding our boundaries gradually speaking to people and getting in uncomfortable places in Jesus name so that your love will change us to the glory of God we pray I have courage amen amen give the Lord a hand now you better leave here with a lot of joy don't let me make Cappy Tan come to your house with that foot he might have to come over there <laughs>